This week, we are talking about corporate earnings. Facebook, now known as Meta, as in Metaverse. And lastly, we're going to provide an update on the labor market. We are just over halfway through fourth quarter earnings season and results have in total been relatively strong. Top line revenue growth has averaged about 16%, while bottom line earnings growth has been about 27% compared to one year ago. Now there's much more to come in earnings season, which we will be paying close attention to. Moving on, Facebook, now called Meta, has experienced a recent stock price drop that started in September and has wiped out about $470 billion worth of market value from the company since then. Now, to put that into perspective, that market value drop is like losing an entire JP Morgan or Johnson & Johnson. The big price drop that occurred last week was largely attributed to weaker than expected revenue forecasts for this first quarter of 2022. Now, this was forward guidance or what they expect will occur, not what has already occurred. The market's reaction goes to show you how much of a surprise this news was. Also, how much expectations can impact prices today. Now let's take a look at Meta stock price since its IPO in 2012. As you can see here, the stock price appreciated to as high as a 900% gain. However, has now settled down to a gain of about 500% since being a publicly traded company. Now, what can occur with stocks, especially high growth companies, is that forward returns can be pulled into the present. Now, this is an important point. These types of high growth companies are often purchased for high expected future growth. When the future growth picture changes, so too does the current stock price, as is the case here with Meta. If we draw a trend line here from start to finish, we see that the current price after the big price drop is actually pretty close to the longer term trend line. During 2020 and 2021, the large run up in price was in a way equivalent to the future returns being pulled into that time period. If returns are too high in one period, they can be offset and lower in subsequent periods to maintain what ends up being a longer term trend. Now, this is the market telling us just how difficult it is for a company to grow at such a high rate for an extended time period. On to the recent jobs report, we observed a stronger than expected jobs growth in January, a gain of 467,000 jobs versus 125,000 that was expected. Now, that's a big difference. The private sector increased the most, led by leisure and hospitality, and the second highest was professional and business services, which also happens to be the economy's highest wage sector. Increases in both segments is a positive for the labor market. Now, on a related front, the unemployment rate actually increased to 4% from 3.9%. Now, this may sound counterintuitive. However, it's due to an increase in the labor participation rate. There are effectively more people entering the workforce now, which is also good news for the overall economy. The results of this improving labor market news means the Federal Reserve, which has a dual mandate of full employment and controlling inflation, will likely remain on track with increasing short-term interest rates here in the first part of 2022.